Welcome back to the Snod Pod with John Snodgrass, your mortgage resource where we're talking mortgages, real estate, and beyond. I'm here with Ralph Walter of Riverwest Realty, where he's the sales manager and a realtor for Riverwest Realty. Ralph, thanks for coming into the Snod Pod. Thanks for having me, John. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, well, hey, let's just you know get right into it. Awesome, let's do it. Um, hey, I like to just you know kind of start each episode. I'd love to hear you know your kind of journey to uh, into real estate. Um, wh- wh- you know, what were you doing before, and um, you know, how'd you get to real estate? Definitely, it's it came about uh, throughout. Uh, Many years, uh, the process, I was in the service industry. Uh, I bartended, I served, did those kind of things, people-pleasing type of jobs. And then I also did property management on the side. Uh, I managed units, uh, buildings that had units involving anywhere between 48 and 100 units. And that eventually turned into, hey, let's make a career out of this and giving it a shot. And it turned out well. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I could see both like service industry, uh, as well as property management translating well. I mean, especially like bartender, you're, because in real estate, we're dealing with a lot of emotion. Um, so different people <laughs> from all different walks of life, yeah, yeah. different personalities, different situations. Uh, you, you hear it all, you know, and it helps to, to be a person that's not to be cliche, but a people person. I hear that. I don't yeah. think of myself as that, yeah. but apparently I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You definitely are. So when did you start at River West Realty? I started in uh, 2000, at the end of 2017. Okay. Uh, I started and I had a little bit of overlap with property management until okay. I felt comfortable with giving it, you know, full time, all my time as mm-hmm. far as being a full time agent. And that happened in uh, 2019. Okay. So when you were at the property management, I guess, like what what, what were you doing there? Are you just like, hey, you getting um, rent when it's coming in? Are you doing some maintenance or like what, what's Not so on? much that. Uh, my job was more focused on being the person that's in between our main office and the tenant. So direct tenant, uh, you know, services as far as that goes. I lived on site in the building. Okay. Did all the renting, uh, you know, lease applications, filling out all that stuff. And of course, before COVID, it was still fairly common to do that stuff just sitting at a table. Sure. And talking to people one on one, like we're here, right here, and going through the rules, the laws, all those kind of things. And I was lucky; I was with a company that actually had, you know, a decent amount of training where you actually knew a lot of the the state laws that involve rentals and renting okay. situations. So when I got my license for real estate, I kind of felt like I had a a leg up on a lot of people because I've already been doing stuff that I eventually I saw on testing for getting my real estate license. Yeah. I'm sure it seems like it, it would translate well. I mean, you know, even as you're showing people, you're maybe you're learning some, you know, things about like, uh, I don't know, plumbing and yeah, and whatnot. And it, well, more so, it just it, it what it involved was just meeting strangers yeah. and letting them know that you know the place that they're looking at, it can be a safe, comfortable fit for their lifestyle uh, as far as you know location, the unit itself. And just talking about what we do and just laying all the rules ahead of time, because just like in uh, real estate and home sales, uh, you're making a year long or potential year, multi-year decision, uh, not with as much money, but you're only doing that in 15, 20 minutes. So first impression, being able to answer questions, talking clearly and all those kind of things, it all translates to real estate. And that's what I learned. And that made it the easy part when I just hopped into doing real estate and doing showings after learning a little bit more about things. Uh, the speaking part, which some people, that's the hardest thing to do is relate yeah. to people yeah. and to talk to people. I already had a leg up on that because I had tons of experience doing that, whether I'd be serving back in the day, bartending yeah. and just showing them apartments. You're a professional conversationalist. Exactly. I know I know this exactly. first exactly. for 20 years. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay. So River West Realty is, is East Side Milwaukee boutique brokerage. Yes. Where, uh, is I know you're doing some listings I, in, in Tosa, but like, where is your focus or, you know, what areas? We try to just focus on Milwaukee County as okay. a whole. Milwaukee County. We travel outside of that. I've sold some places uh, near La Crosse and Madison oh, wow. and, you know, Sockville all around uh, as far as that kind of stuff goes too. But we try to focus for the most part on Milwaukee County. We don't want to box ourselves just into River West and the east side. Yeah. But we do tend to do 
a large chunk of our business in that part. And part of it's just our familiarity. I live in River West and I take pride in being somebody that knows the area growing up in Brewers Hill and being on the east side. Yeah. Uh, my whole life, I've always lived over there. And my mom still lives, you know, a few minutes away in Brewers Hill. So as far as just knowing the ins and outs of the neighborhood, we pride ourselves in, in doing that and being, you know, Doing, doing what you know. You're an expert. Exactly. You know, you've been there your whole life, like you said. So Brewers Hill and River West now. and Yeah. Uh, Lower East Side. I grew up walking on Brady Street, riding my bike to the lakefront, fishing. fishing all up and down the lake, the Milwaukee River, Estabrook Park, Clutch Park, all those areas. So Love it. Yeah. I routinely run into people that have bought or sold their homes uh, with me when I'm out walking the dog or riding the bike and yeah. or just going to the farmer's market or something like that. All right. My son just got into fishing. Side note here so i don't know what i'm doing so i might be hitting you up to help hey out definitely there. anytime <laughs> there's a saying called teach a kid fishing and there's nothing better than watching a kid actually catch a fish and the way it makes yeah. you feel teach a man to... exactly that i can teach you too <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's just i mean like is a good chunk of your business first time home buyers or is it um you know are you working with investors that are trying to buy you know two units or maybe some uh you know just rentals in the River West, or it's a it's it's pretty well divided between them. But uh, you know, when you first start, and you know, in your first few years, you know, you tend to work your a lot of your business tends to be more buyer uh, linked sure. to the buyer yeah. side as far as that goes. So yeah. uh, I do do probably like a third of the business is first time home buyers, okay. and you have to you know almost be a teacher and teaching people about the real estate transactions so they can understand things. You want people to just understand what they're doing, the whole process from beginning to end, whether yeah. that is focusing on where you want to live, your budget, all those things. Is, and then when you get something under contract, the ins and outs, so they understand what the process is and what's going on behind the scenes. Got it. So question for you, like, so like Milwaukee, obviously some of the homes are, you know, can go back to the late 1800s, early 1900s, you know, compared to when you get out to the suburbs where the homes sure. are, you know, maybe 20, 30 years old or less. Like, I'm, I'm just thinking that like so many people are waiving home inspections in this competitive market. Yes, like yes. on the, on an older home, man, I, I would struggle to do that. Um, I don't know if you can opine on. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, what are you doing in that situation when you're, you're looking at an older home? The, the first thing I always want to tell people and to make, make it clear to people that are in buyers and sellers, you know, is that we wish that the market wasn't what it is right yeah. now where you <laughs> could do home inspections. Everybody can feel comfortable. They're not, you know, take a little of that stress out that you've had your home checked out, yeah. you know, but at the same time though, you know, home inspectors are human. They can miss things, but I think the key is uh, to know or have an agent that knows some of the older inventory and what to look for, what could be a major issue and what couldn't be. You know, because uh, some of these homes that are now, it's hard to believe, you know, in Milwaukee, it's I routinely, I live in a house that was built in 1890. You wow. know, when you think about that, that's 130 years ago. And when they were building these foundations and doing certain things, they didn't have the tools or the technology they have now. So right. there's certain kind of things where it might be, uh, you know, if you're out in Waukesha and you're in a home that was built in the last 20 years with a, a poured concrete foundation or something that was maybe even from the 70s or 80s with a cinder block. You know, you're getting cream city brick and more than likely these guys that were building this, you know, it might have been a little bit off yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the first, you know, they were a little bit out of plumb initially when they built it. And yeah. some of those things where, you know, certain things are major red flags and other parts of the area are not as big of a deal, you know, for us. And right. that's the part of having a place with that character. That's so, what we <laughs> sure, sure. Um, I love that word character. Uh, um, so I guess like sometimes I am you know, advising buyers like, hey, even though you're waiving the home inspection, hey, I'd either consider maybe doing it during the process or getting a home inspection afterwards. I mean, I, where do you stand so, on that? So, you know, as much as we would like to think that you could get an offer accepted and not have a home inspection contingency on the offer and then mm -hmm. still do one, any seller that's not crazy is going to say, hey, you have to wait until the deal is done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. 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 Don't shoot. We'll clear that up first. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. I still yeah. feel like it, it's good because anytime yeah. that you're doing something is whether it's buying a car or, you know, even in relation to your own health. And I like using the analogy, the condition report is kind of 
disclosing pre-existing conditions. And if you were getting, you know, life insurance or something like that, and you were able to get it without doing a checkup, hey, if you haven't had a checkup within the last right. year, still good to know your overall health and the overall health of your home is important. Yeah. It can uh, let you prioritize some of the things that you might want to do, you know, uh, d depending upon what the issue is as far yeah. as that goes too. So it's still good to know your house in and out. And it's not about just finding out what's wrong with your house, you yeah. know, get the right home inspector, you know, and you're the right agent and the agents that are around should have good home inspectors that can actually walk you through the house and you're asking questions about it. So it's a learning process. It's, it's more about just learning about what's wrong with the house. It's learning about what's right. Like this is where your water shut off in case you have a leak. You'll know where that's at by doing a home inspection. You'll be able to run down and do it, you know, shut off your water before every, you know, your whole kitchen fills up with water or something like that, you know, <laughs> right, right. know, know how to, you know, turn on your breakers, just some of the basic info yeah. about that anybody should know about your house. And it's nothing to teach you how to repair it all or those kind of things, but it'll at least teach you how to, you know, look for issues and to go out when it's raining and see how your gutters are working and yeah. draining right and all those kind of things. It's amazing uh, what water is the main enemy of, of a house and you need to sometimes be out in the rain and walk yeah. around your house in the rain. Well, you <laughs> know what, you, you, bring up a, you bring up a good point. Um, like when I bought my house, it was six years ago now, and um, the water heater broke and my son, fortunately, had heard a noise. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I go downstairs and I didn't know where to shut the water up. <laughs> and like, I was just like, I'm calling my, <laughs> my dad, I'm calling my uncle. And then I uh, fortunately got a hold of my, uh, uh, you know, uh, plumber uh, and you know, he's like, what? walk up, we're FaceTiming, we're walking around. At but like, it wasn't that's a leak. A Imagine great... if it was something that was a leak though, and you're running around and you don't know where to shut off your water at or something yeah. like that. Or there's well, this some... was big. There was a lot of water. Yeah. You found know. it eventually. <laughs> it, we, we limited the damage, but that's such a good point. Just the home inspector to, to you know, hey, take some notes. Take some notes, and... learn, ask questions about the house, yeah. anything, you know, that you don't know, yeah. just ask them and they should be knowledgeable about your whole house as a whole. So it's not always about that. And you know, one of the things you want to keep in mind is uh, most of the time when you're walking through a house with your age, they should be able to spot any of the major sure. issues, you know, unless yeah. it's something where it's a basement that has issues and it's a finished basement. Yeah. Even a home inspector won't be able to tell those kind of things. There are yeah. little things that you can look at, but you know, what I find in, and what I talk to people about, unfortunately in this market, when they're waiving inspections that you know, most of the time, if you know that the roof is fairly new, the foundation looks good and the mechanicals are okay, more than likely, you know, the most you're looking at is maybe a couple thousand bucks, yeah. you know, on average yeah. as far as a home inspection. So it's not completely the end of the world if you do wait. Yeah, you're going to find a couple things like, exactly. yeah, of, of, uh, you know, th that's what you know, mine did. And it was like, all right, whatever. Exactly. And um, when you're buying your house, you know, if the previous owners kept good records of things, they yeah. have receipts, you walk into that kitchen table and yeah. you see all the realtors with their cards there. Yeah. You see a folder that opens up and it's a binder and it's all the receipts of all those kind of things. Yeah. You can feel more comfortable possibly doing a- Those are usually engineered on, engineers usually own those homes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I went into one home where he's just like, here, this is what I did. So, That's good. I mean, uh, the same thing. If yeah, you're buying a yeah, car, you want yeah, service records. Yeah. You know, you want to be able to look it up, you, or Carfax, or have somebody yeah. that kept a folder and they kept up with preventative maintenance. Homes are the same way, especially your major mechanicals, little things. Catch stuff right away. Don't wait for it to become a big issue. And yeah. people did those kind of things, and you got that good feeling about it, you know. Well, hey, man, I love this. A lot of good nuggets here. Um, yeah. Let's We come back for one more episode. There's more stuff I wanted to go on, like investment properties and stuff. Definitely. Good. Anytime. You got some more time. All Anytime. Right. I would love to, John. All right. We're going to come right back. Um, this is John Snodgrass, and this is the Snod Pod, where we're talking real estate, mortgages, and beyond with Ralph Walter of River West Realty. We're going to do one more episode with Ralph. Uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for tuning in.